When Oliver Lake played a hometown gig at the museum, they called it Art Meets Jazz. The world-famous saxophonist brought his paintings and his poetry with him as well. That was quite a treat for me because I felt honored by my hometown, Montclair, and the art museum because we had four pieces of my artwork on the stage. First, it's the salad, then the meat. I read my poetry. Wait, bring all my food at one time on the same plate. And then I performed with a trio that I've been playing with over the last 25, 30 years off and on. In terms of improvisation and creating music spontaneously, I couldn't ask for better cohorts to take that venture with me. People know that I'm playing from my heart and I'm trying to make a clear communication. And if they're open, they will receive the message that I'm giving them. Whether it's a squeak or a squawk, <laughs> they can still hear that what I'm doing is honest and accept it, even though that's not what they normally listen to. Oliver Lake has been composing and performing innovative jazz with a variety of collaborators for over five decades. Now in his 70s, he's still open to crossing musical categories and blending genres. And he brings this same philosophy to his writing and visual art. Throughout my career, I just felt that it was very important to be open and incorporate that openness into my creativity. Spoken word, visual arts, and music, and composition, I look at it as being one thing. The visual art started with me sketching, and I ended up sketching a lot of musicians, and I kind of continue that throughout my career, doing a little bit of painting. And I asked my friend, Douglas Hewitt, who is a visual artist and a saxophonist as well, I said, I don't have any time to paint, but I, want to, I really want to spend some time painting. And he looked at me and said, do you have 15 minutes? And I said, yeah. He said, well, paint. And I literally started painting 15 minutes a day. But it turned out for me as a meditation when I started off doing it. And then, of course, that grew. And then the next thing I knew, I had a show. And it's just continued on from there over the past 15 years. When I was a teenager, there was a guy who used to go around and put safety pins on all of the kids in the block. And I asked him, why are you putting the safety pins on me? He said, now you're in the 17 Club. I said, what does you have to do to be in the 17 Club? He said, just be good. I always remember that, and I've been using the safety pin in a lot of my art. Just be good. Oliver moved with his family to Montclair in the late 80s for the schools, but soon discovered a supportive community of artists. Putting down roots in Montclair included moving his wife Marion's clothing shop from Brooklyn. So my wife's shop is called Dim Two Hands, and it's play on words because he, she uses her two hands to make a lot of the women's clothing that's being sold there, and it's been in Montclair for now 25 years. Well, I went to FIT, and I'm a textile designer, and I was working in New York for quite a while as a textile designer. I make a lot of things in the store. They have the label that says Dim Two Hands. Those are made by me. I always was doing some kind of a little hustle as a young person, you know, baking cakes or baking pies or sewing or doing something like that. So I always kind of had a hustle. When we're out, people who visit my wife's shop come up and say, oh, you're Marion Lake's husband. <laughs> She's on the case. Hustle. <laughs> Well, Olive is like one of these people who he is always doing his own paperwork and always writing music and trying to think of the next thing that he could do in the next project. Whether he's painting, playing music, or reading poetry, all of Oliver's work benefits from a lifelong work ethic he learned from his mother while growing up in St. Louis. The primary thing that she influenced me with was her work ethic and her hustle. She owned a pool room and a restaurant, and I mentioned that in Breaking Glass, the poem that I wrote. She was very busy and an inspiration for me throughout my life, and I hope I pass that inspiration on to my kids. 
My mama used to break glass. I say, what you doing? She breaking glass. She say, we get 25 cents for every bushel basket of glass. We'll pick up all them empties and put them in the basket. Why is she breaking glass? She owns the Five Sisters restaurant with the Four Sisters. She owns the pool room next door to the Five Sisters and the car wash right next door to the pool room. And she owns my three-chair shoeshine parlor that my stepfather built for me, which is next door to the car wash. She owns the house, which is just next door to the shoeshine parlor. Why is she breaking glass? Every time I heard chink, 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 it was my mama breaking glass with a hammer. She had a hammer early Sunday morning. Chink, chink, chink. That's the morning after the Saturday all night crap game that my dad ran. She had all that and she still, she broke glass. She racked balls in the pool room, cooked pig ear sandwiches in the restaurant and gave me anything I asked for. I'm much older now and my mom has passed on over the white stone. Now I'm breaking glass. Thank you, Montclair.